Hello, my friends. Since we have taken the outline for this chapter one, no matter we're focusing on chapter one, there are going to be a lot of lessons. All the lessons are that chapter one, which are living things. Since we have taken the outline, now let's now focus on the first class, which is the characteristics of living things. Are you set? And this will be our lesson one because it is in first class for this chapter. Now, for us to understand this, I'll start by telling you that let's say we have um, a group of organisms. Let's say we have lion, we have eagle, we have a spoon, we have a car, and we now went further to get another group of organisms. So let's say we have snake, we have your maze, we have your computer, we have your chair, you have your coconut tree. Now, if you look at this group of organisms, there are some that have life. There are those that don't have life. The ones that have life are said to be called living things, while those that don't have life are said to be called living things. Now, let's now divide this thing to two now. Give me, let's split this. Now, you can see that in one side, in this side, we can have, we have lion, we have your eagle, we have your snake, we have your coconut tree, we have your maze. These ones have life in them. Because they have life in them, they are said to be called living things. Why, if you take a look about your spoon, your computer, your chair, your car, these ones lack life or they don't have life. And because they don't have life, they are said to be called your non-living things. Do you understand? So we have what to call your living things and we have what non living things just by the synchronizing those that have life and those that lack life. Now, what's my introduction? I'll start by telling you that when we study organisms that have life, organisms that have life, we won't talk about organisms that have life, we're talking about living things. The study of living things is termed as biology. How do you define biology? Biology is simply the study of life, or you say it is the study of living things. Or we can define biology as simply the science of life. The science of life is said to be what biology. By now, you should, you should be used to learn live teaching. By the time we make a statement, all our statements are backed up by past questions. As I make a statement, I will show you the past question. This is a past question that has been asked in YEC. So what is the science of life? The science of life is referred to as what biology. Take note that when we talk about living things, two things should come to your mind. Living things, we can now divide living things into two. Number one, plants, and number two, what animal. So living things can be grouped into plants and what animal. Take note that in this introduction, we say that the study of life or the study of living things is a biology or the science of life is said to be biology. And we say that life is divided into two, plants and what an animal. So anytime you talk about life, anytime you talk about living things, what should come to your mind? Either you are plants. Or you are animal. The, best, the big question I want to ask you, are you an animal or you are a plant? If you don't know, I can't help you. Of course, we are what animals. Now, let's try the first past question. Why does this and 12? Question 1. The question says that the science of life is referred to as option E, C, anatomy. B, C, biology. C, C, ecology. D, talk about what phylogeny. First of all, let's um, see the options one after the other. What's anatomy? Anatomy is a branch of biology. That talk about the study of all structures. When we study the bone of either plant or animal, so we are talking about what and then of this structure. What is ecology? This with the interaction between an organism and its environment. When you interact to an environment, it is called ecology. What is phylogeny? It is simply the evolutionary history or line of descent of a species or a higher taxonomic group. Let's say, for example, we try to trace where you're coming from. Okay, you are from animals, right? On that, you have your kingdom and Emilia, let's if the uh, uh, phylum this, um, class this, group this. When we try to trace where you came from, we are tracing your word phylogeny. Of course, it's not phylogeny, it's not ecology, it's not anatomy. What becomes the answer? Biology. Because biology is simply the science of word of life. If you say you understand that, let's now go further. What are the characteristics of living things? We said that organisms that have life are said to be called living things. And the study of living things is said to be biology. Now, the kinds of living things include, I call them Mr. Niger D. Mr. Niger D. They can be more than that, but what are the categories? Number one, we have things like your what your movement. All living things move. Now we have what respiration, we have your nutrition, we have things like your irritability or your sensitivity, we have your growth and development. We have things like your excretion, we have your reproduction, we have limited size, and we have your what your lifespan, we have your competition, we have your adaptation, we have your evolution. Now, these are the characteristics. Have you seen them? Now we're going to take them one after the other, one after the other. I'll be striking their past question. We take one, we strike the past question. So we say that these are the features we must see. Once we see that you possess these features, 
who will be said to say you are what a living thing do you understand so let's start with the first guy movement very important what is movement most animals move from one place to another either in search of food in search of shelter or they are trying to escape from their enemies as well as plants most plants are fixed and can only move certain part of their body either their roots either their shoots either their flowers either their leaves you see the plants moving either the shoots or the flowers or the water leaves now but i want you to know that however some non-living things can move now let's say for example like a, a, a non-living thing let's say like a chair water can take chair wind can take a chair so non-living things too can what can move do you understand but take note that the movement of non-living things is by external factor why the movement of living things is by what internal factor that internal factor like your muscles like your bone like your flagella like your what see there so take note that we said that when we talk about movement and living things move plants move from one place to another either to escape uh, for shelter for feeding to escape from their enemies plants move too that's why they are fixed they are fixed but they move certain part of their body either they are roots or they are leaves or they are what or they are stems but take note that we now want to say that okay also know that non-living things move but take note that their their movement is by external factor not internal are you seeing that external factors such as your what your wind your water etc i will now want to see but movement of living things is by what internal or structure which are your muscles and that's so take note that one feature or characteristics of living things is what movement do you understand the second feature of living things is what we call what respiration. Very important. This is the most important of all of them. All living things need energy to walk. So all living things what respire. All living things need energy to walk. Therefore, all living things what respire. I told you it is the most important. Now take note that what's respiration? It is the chemical reaction it involved the breakdown of nutrients to release what energy. The chemical reaction that involves breaking down of nutrients to release energy is what we call your what your respiration. Do you understand? We say that live all living things need energy to work. Hence, all living things respire. What's respiration? It is breaking down of nutrients to release what energy. Do you understand? What's now the third characteristics? Nutrition. What's nutrition? It is the assimilation of food. Nutrition also called the assimilation of food. We said it is the taking in of nutrients which are organic substance, minerals, ions, containing raw materials, all in the name to give what energy and this energy effort for growth and repair for absorbing what assimilation of what tissues. So when we take in nutrients, we are assimilating food. Do you understand that? So your nutrients can be organic or inorganic. Organic, we're talking about carbohydrates, talking about protein, talking about your lipid. But we won't talk about inorganic, you're talking about your minerals, talking about your water, your water. Do you understand? So we have talked about uh, movement, we have talked about respiration, we have talked about what nutrition. Take note that the next property is what we call your what irritability or sensitivity. It is the ability of an organism to respond to what to stimuli, either external or what internal. So you're just sitting on your own and something touches you. Let's say an odd object touches you, you feel that pain, you respond, you remove your hand. That's what we call what irritability. It is a characteristic of living things. Only living things respond to still life from the environment. That still life can be light, it can be water, it can be temperature, it can be hunger, it can be chemical and physical what substance. Do you understand? Also take note that the shoot of green leaves to burn to all sorts of light, while the roots burn to all sorts of water. If you see a new plant coming up, you see the plant that the plant is going, it's going to burn. Maybe this is the source of light. You see it burning towards that source of what light. That process whereby an organism responds to its environment is what we call what sensitivity or what irritability. Now let's try the first pass question there. Jump to 2011, question 15. The question says that the ability of living organism to detect and respond to changes in the environment is termed as what are the bits? The complete series of classes, right, as far as your syllabus is concerned regarding your jam awaek. Everything has been covered in details for you in the LearnLift app. And guess what? The sweet part is that you have access to your CBT, right? You have access to your video lessons. You have access to your notes. You have access to your past questions. Everything from the beginning to the end. 
is directly in the lane lift app for you. So all you have to do is just mark down to Play Store or App Store and download the lane lift app where you follow all your classes from the beginning to the end. A quick one before we move, let's get back to class. Enjoy. Option A, C, growth. B, talk about taxes. C, talk about locomotion. And D, talk about ir irritability. We said the ability for an organism to respond. You see that we call it sensitivity or you call it irritability. Making option D to become the word they answer. Do you understand that? Now, since we have talked about irritability, growth, I've talked about irritability. We have talked about your movement, respiration. Let's now talk about your word growth and development. What is growth? Growth is the irreversible enlargement of an organism. Growth occurs when anabolism that has built up exceeds what breaking down that's catabolism. When you build up exceeds your what your catabolism. That's when your anabolism. We say that we can also say great growth is when anabolism anabolism is greater than what catabolism. Do you understand? It is irreversible. You cannot grow today and reduce tomorrow. Do you understand? The irreversible um, enlargement in what and what can you Let's quickly say number six, which will talk about your word excretion. What is excretion? All living things must remove poisonous substance from the body. So the process of removing poisonous substance from the body is called what accumulation. If it's called excretion. If you accumulate this waste product and you don't excrete them, it can result to what to poison or toxin in the body and it can lead to death. So therefore, all waste product must be what excreted. When you eat food, the part that is not needed must be removed. So these are your characteristics of living things. Do you understand that? Now, quickly, let's take the other characteristics, which will be our, our reproduction. Reproduction is very important. Just imagine your parents did not reproduce. How will they give birth to you? And just imagine you are not planning to reproduce. How will that... Now, listen to me. If there is no reproduction, there is extinction. Reproduction ensures that there is continuity of life. Life is continuous. If we don't reproduce, the whole world will go into what? Extinction. So that's why scripture says, go into the world and what? Multiply. So all living organisms reproduce their kind. Are you seeing that? All living, all living organisms reproduce their what? Their kind. And reproduction are in various types, either sexual or what asexual. And we say that if there is no reproduction, there's going to be what extinction. Do you understand that? The next property or characteristic of living thing we're going to talk about is what we call your what limited what size. Every species has its own size. A rabbit can never grow to the size of an elephant. Every species has its own size. Rabbit has their size, elephant has their size, man has their size, dinosaur has their size. Are you seeing that? So, you can only grow within your world to size. So, that is the characteristic of what living things. But you see, non living things, they don't grow just the way they came, that's the way they are. Do you understand that? So, living things, they have what limited what size. Another property of living things is lifespan. Now, all organisms have lifespan. There are some organisms that their lifespan is 61 days. There are organisms where their lifespan is five years. There are organisms where their lifespan is what? 100 years. So you can compare. The lifespan of rats is not the same lifespan of what animal. Do you understand? So all organisms have a definite period of what existence from birth to what maturity. They have a particular time from birth to maturity to what? To death. Do you understand that? The next part is what to call your what? Your competition. Now, this is where evolution is going to come out from. Evolution talk about that all organisms, in as far as a living organism, for you to survive, be it plant and animal, you must compete. You must compete because resources are limited. Let's say you are an organism, let's say animal now, you must compete for food, for water, even plants too. They, they, they compete where you, where plants grow. They compete to drag nutrients within themselves. That is why when the nutrients are limited, the plant, the plant does not grow well. So all living things struggle for what for existence of life. Either they struggle for food, for water, for light, for space. It is there's always struggle for what for survival. Now people are struggling now to get admission. People are struggling to get medicine. Do you understand? There is struggle for what for survival. Now the next thing to talk about is so when we talk about your what your adaptation. What's adaptation? All living organisms have the ability to adapt to the environment for them to what to survive. 
adaptation is very important. If you're in Africa, Africa has a high extreme temperature. So Africa is, some major part of Africa is hot. So if you are living in Africa, you have to adapt. If you go to Europe, places like your Canada, your Russia, they are extremely world cold. So you must get used or get adapted to, what, to the environment. If not, you'll not be able to survive. So for organisms to survive, they must adapt to their world, to their environment. The last property is what we call what evolution. All living, all living things are capable of gradually changing into new successive species to respond to life changes and their world, their environment. That is why if we're going to talk about evolution, evolution is very interesting. Talking about from, uh, from your Darwinism, your Baptist, the Lamarck, the, the uh, Jim Baptist Lamarck theory, we're going to talk about all of them. But they try to explain to us that man or organisms, big plant and animal, are involving, they are changing continuously so that they can adapt to the future of the environment. Are you with me? Now, certain features you have, because the environment has changed, you don't longer need them. So you're going to do away with them. But that you are going to embrace new features so that you can adapt. If the environment is extremely cold, you're going to develop tough skin so that you can adapt. And not that tough skin, there's going to be excess fats. So that you can what you can adapt to the water but if the environment is very hot you're going to uh, develop light skin so that you can easily release what water and heat from the water from the body do you understand that these are the properties or the characteristics of your living things let's take one or two past question jam 1979 question one popular jam question all living organisms a photosynthesize b respire c move d feed an option is a transpire. Now, this is a popular jam question that is always causing a word a controversy. Now, let's explain the question. All living organisms. Now, when we talk about living organisms, we are talking about both plants and animal. Option A is a photosynthesize. No. Only plant photosynthesize. What well, photosynthesis is the process whereby all green plants manufacture their word, their food using your word sunlight, chlorophyll. Right? So, only plants, only green plants photosynthesize. Now, let's go to transpire. What's transpire? It is the movement of water out of the of, of leaves to, to the atmosphere. Only plants transpire. Only plants transpire. Movement of water to the root, from the root to the leaf, and it goes to the atmosphere. For humans, water leaves their body by what? Evaporation. Now, let's now talk about what? Movement. Now, what's movement? Movement simply, move, simply is moving from one place to another. Now, uh, Animals move from one place to another. Plants move, but their movement is limited because they always move their body. They do not change your word position. Now, now left with your word option B and your option word option D. Now, let's first of all start with feeding. What's feeding? Feeding, when we talk about feeding, we are talking about taking in food substances. And taking in food substances are in process. Do you understand? Food, you talk about taking in food processing. Most times, when we talk about feeding, we are talking about taking hard food. Hard food. But not all living organisms take in hard food. Some assimilate. They take in fluid. When we talk about fluid, we are talking about, uh, let's say, for example, like a mosquito, sporozoic. We have different mode of nutrition. We have autotrophic, we have heterotrophic, we have sporozoic, we have saprophytic. So in saprophytic and sporozoic, they are not taking in hard food. They are taking in what liquid. Some are taking organic nutrients. And because they are taking in organic nutrients, we can't call that feeding. Do you see that? Feeding is property of living organisms, but not all. Look at the word all, 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 all. Some don't take in hard food. They take in what fluid, which is not what feeding. But respiration is common to all organisms because that even if they take in nutrient, that nutrient must be broken through a chemical process to yield energy. And that energy is what's needed to carry out the processes. Therefore, the answer is what? Respire. That's what respiration. Making option B to become this. I hope you understand. I also explain it in the notes. A lot of past questions in the notes. We can't finish the past questions in class. A lot are in the words in the notes. Jam 2009. Question two, the question C. A characteristic exhibited by all living things. That means what is what is exhibited by all living things? Option A is C said reproduction. B said aerobic respiration. C said ability to move from one place to another. D said ability to remove one substances. Now let's examine them one after the other. Option A say reproduction. Now we have type of reproduction. We have sexual and asexual. Advanced animals use sexual. Or let's use the word advanced living things use sexual. Why? Your primitive living things use a sexual. Anytime you hear a sexual, it's for primitive. So primitive living things use um, a sexual. 
and primitive living things are part of living things. So not all uses what cellular. Some use what are cellular. Now let's now go to uh, option B. Let me talk about aerobic respiration. We have two type of respiration. We have aerobic involving what oxygen. This one's happening in the word mitochondria. While we have anaerobic, this one happen in the cytoplasm. So some organism use um, use mitochondria. Some why some use what anaerobic. Aerobic occurs in mitochondria and it occurs in some organism. Why anaerobic occur in the cytoplasm? Take note that there are some organisms that lack what mitochondria and because they lack mitochondria, they use their cytoplasm for what for respiration. Such cells undergo anaerobic. So aerobic is wrong because not all uses what aerobic. Some uses what anaerobic. Now option C said that the ability to move from one place to another. Yes, animals move from one place to another, but plants. Do not move from one place to another. They only move their body. So this is what this is wrong. Let's see option D. Ability to remove unwanted substances. Yes, in as far as you are plant or you are animals, you must remove unwanted word substances. Making option D to become the answer. Anytime you are not sure, try to dissect all the options one after the word the other. Now, what are the difference between living and non-living things? Living things have life. Non-living things do not have life. In as far as you don't have life, you are said to be non-living. Now, living things they feed. They respire, they excrete, they reproduce, they respond to stimuli. Non-living things, they do not, they do not feed. Stone don't feed, they don't respire, they do not excrete, they do not respond to your work. Now, movement is carried by what? By muscles, bone, flagella, cilia. But this one's movement is carried by external agents, such as your word, your wind, and your word current. We talked about that living things, they age and die. Non-living things, they don't age and die. Stone is the same today tomorrow and forward forever living things can never exist without non-living things e.g we need oxygen for respiration all living things need water to work to exist but take note that living things and uh, non-living things can exist without living things they, they never send us stone does not even know that me and you are alive these are the difference between your living things and non-living things let's take another set of past questions we there are a lot of past questions in the note we can't finish them that's why listen to me for you to join the 350 gang, ensure that as we treat everything, finish all the past questions. So that you can join the 350 gang and also be an A student in what in biology. Jam 2008 question 2, the question said, A characteristic that can possibly be shared by living and non-living. What can both of them share? Option A, C, locomotion. B, C, irritability. C, talk about increase in body mass. D, talk about increase in size. Locomotion. We cannot share this because non-living non things does not move, so that's out. Irritability. Non-living things does not respond to stimuli. So, increase biomass. What is biomass? Biomass, talk about, look at the word bio. Bio, talk about life. B, talk about mass. So, that's the size of living organism. Biomass. Body size of what? The size of a living organism. So, they are not living, so they cannot have, they cannot have living mass. What about increase in size? Yes. Living organism can increase in size, growth. Non-living organism can increase in size too. Talking about if, for example, you heat metal. Metal is not living, it can increase. Heat can make them increase. Wind can make them increase. If non-living things absorb water, let's say like your foam, if foam absorb water, it can increase in size. So this is shared by both living and non-living things. So making option D to become the answer. Are you following the class? You must listen to me. It is possible to get 100, 100 in biology. As a medical student, you're going to read medicine. You're going to read um, uh, uh, nursing. You should supposed to be boiling in biology. Biology by default is supposed to be an 100. Uh, uh, you're supposed to get an 100 in what's in biology. That's why the learn leaf. The learn leaf is strictly for those that want to join the 350 gang. For jam student, wife, for wife student, A+. Plus. We know the delta with the boil. Are you feeling me? Quickly now, if you say you understand that, ensure that for you to be among the 350 gang, what are the things you must do? Number one, always go through the note. After every teaching, roll to the note. The note has a lot of past questions. For example, now, this credit of living team have about 15 to 20 past questions. We've taken just like five in class. We can't take all the past questions in class. Now that you have finished it, you go through the note, just revise the note while I finish all the past questions. All the past questions is answered with their words. All the answers are there. After that, practice CBT. Try to undercut stuff and you must practice it. All they have asked. Either you are you are answering it in the notes or you are practicing it through what CBT in the word. Go to the CBT uh, segment, that the past question segment, and what and practice. Always tell a friend about the learn lift app. If the learn lift app is beneficial to you, always tell a friend. Don't forget our slogan is join the 350 gang. 
and there was a one plus if you say you understand that i'll see you in the next class we'll be talking about virus why are we talking about virus on that kind of limits because they behave as living and non-living thing and jam has asked jama wayek has asked roughly about 20 questions in this aspect you're going to see that and that will be our lesson too but for now peace out hope you've enjoyed this class guess what to follow up for more classes just download the lane lift app whether on play store or app store and then follow up your classes you must do extremely well i'll see you in class bye bye